So today we have a very important video that we need to get to because a lot of people, millions of Americans feel like they are the victims. They're the victims of theft, they're the victims of Congress, they're the victims of our US government. Now, I wanna address this because there are people out there that are getting a potential $1,000 payday. I wanna address what's happening there because this is a huge issue. It's a common theft that millions of, of Americans are going through and it's creating extreme hardship. I will address that after we talk about debt prioritization. What is debt prioritization and why are GOP lawmakers asking for this? Well, let's talk about that because again, this is why many people feel they are the victims. So first, all I ask is if you can spend just two seconds, go ahead, hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm and let's begin. So what is debt prioritization? Well, other than it's hard to say, this is what the GOP has been asking for a commitment uh, uh, on from Democrats. Republicans say that having a backup plan just in case the, you know, the two parties can't come to an agreement on the debt ceiling, this is just sound politics. But is it? Well, let's go over what the, the GOP, the current GOP legislation would look like. Because this is where some people are saying they they like the idea, okay, just the overall idea behind it, but as far as the, the actual legislation, that it needs some work. Well, here's what we know. First, who would be prioritized if the US defaulted on our debts? Would it be the American people? Would it be people on social security? Would be it uh, would we see lawmakers continue to get their salary, right? Well, who would be prioritized? Well, according to the GOP legislation that came out of the Ways and Means uh, Committee, it, the first group of payments would be made to principal and interest payments. This would be held by the public, okay? So this essentially means, yes, a country like China, who has, a tr who has like, a, I think a trillion dollars in, in U.S. debt, um, or assets, um, they would be first prioritized. Okay, that would be the first priority payment. Go to China. This would also, though, uh, create payments for Social Security and Medicare. So, for all those people saying that, you know, Medicare, if if the U.S. defaults, we will see Social Security payments would not go out. That's not true. Would they be delayed? That's likely. But would we not see Social Security go out? Would we not see Medicare? No, at least according to this piece of legislation, that's how it would work. Now, without this piece of legislation, that's where things get a little tricky because that's where uh, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says that we just can't, we just can't come into this, uh, this debt you know, ceiling situation and prioritize certain payments and not others. That, that's not the way their system works. So. If that's the case and we don't pass any legislation like this one, then we could see Social Security and Medicare not receive payments, all right? That, so that's the first tier. The second tier, we would see the Department of Defense, they would get priority payments. Then from there on out, any other program would fall in uh, subsequent tiers. This also includes salaries for Congress, the President, and even the Vice President. These payments for Congress, the Vice President, and the president, these are actually in the final two tiers. Now, even Medicaid isn't a top priority, which would be devastating for you know a lot of people um, that are relying on Medicaid. Again, you know people in nursing homes, we wouldn't see this money go out. This would not be a priority, and that could be a problem. Now, according to many lawmakers, the tiers are acceptable. They like the idea of yes. Let's, let's create tiers, but should China be getting uh, prioritized over the people here in the United States? Well, the reason why, uh, according to reports, why Republicans are doing this or why they did it is because if we don't prioritize our, you know, you know China and you know, other countries, the problem there is it becomes a global issue. But if we continue to make those payments to you know, outside investors, it might not hurt as bad in the long term. Short term, it would be devastating to the American people. But long term, it would be better. 
So again, we'll see what happens there. But according to these lawmakers, that yes, they accept the tiers, but they do not accept where some of these programs sit in those tiers. So moving forward, experts do anticipate that there's gonna be negotiations on this piece of legislation to try to move these programs forward and kind of move them around. But with that said, this piece of legislation uh, is more of an insurance policy than anything else, and it's not a real solution to the debt ceiling. So I have heard from some Republicans and Democrats that say they don't agree with this. Others say that they like the idea. The overall consensus is it still needs work. So even though this could potentially pass in the House of Representatives, which I don't think it would because there are enough Republicans that are not, you know, happy about this, that they want to see changes. I don't see this passing in the House, but I do think that this is a step forward and we could potentially see this insurance policy uh, move in the right direction. But again, some lawmakers say we shouldn't be creating an insurance policy uh, that you know, is going to kick into effect if or when the, the debt ceiling is breached, that we need to come up with a solution now that we still have a little bit of time. So, We'll see what happens, but as of right now, there are still discussions on this. Now, I want to talk about this uh, more than common theft that is causing many Americans extreme hardship because this is something that every week probably I get, I get a comment, I get an email, I get something that somebody has had this happen to them. But here's why I'm bringing this up. There's a theft that is occurring and we've seen it happen for the past few years. And experts are now saying that it's only increasing and it's not retail theft. But here's the reason why it's creating extreme hardship. It's because six out of 10 American households, they can't afford a $450 emergency expense. And two out of 10 households, they can only afford an emergency expense if it was placed on a credit card. But that's creating more issues as well because many households are racking up their credit card debt and not paying it off, which means that their credit cards will be unusable very soon. So technically, eight out of 10 American households couldn't afford a $450 emergency expense. Now, why is this a problem? Well, it will, and what does this do to that? Uh, how can this uh, potentially cause a $1,000 payday? Well, here's why. This is a problem. Because right now, according to insurance reports, they indicate that thefts of catalytic converters are on the rise once again. In 2022, we knew that more than 150,000 catalytic converters were stolen off of people's cars. I will give you a list of some of those top cars as well. But it's because of this, all those people had to get them replaced. For a catalytic converter replacement, it costs about between 500 about $2,500, depending on your vehicle's age um, and stuff like that and you know, size and whatever. But why? Why would somebody want an old piece of metal off your vehicle, right? Especially if you have a, a vehicle that's you know, five, 10 years old, why would they want that? Well, some people ask, well, the metal can't be worth that much, right? Well, here's what we know. And this is why insurance experts say thefts are on the rise once again. Listen to this. There are really two extremely valuable uh, rare materials inside of a catalytic converter. And these are used to, uh, to minimize the, the exhaust and the fumes that go out of your, your vehicle. On average, a catalytic converter has around five grams of platinum, has around four grams of palladium, and has two grams of rhodium. Listen to this, listen to the, the change in uh, you know, how much these, these rare uh, materials are worth, right? These rare metals. An ounce of platinum five years ago went for about $880. Today it goes for 987. Palladium, five years ago, for an ounce went for $500. Today, this goes for over $1,400. And rhodium, again, uh, palladium and rhodium, I believe, are both found in China and Russia. Russia's the big one. But rhodium went for $640 an ounce five years ago. Today, $9,400 an ounce. This means a catalytic converter contains around $1,000 in rare metals. 
This doesn't include uh, you know, the actual catalytic converter. This is the stuff inside of it, okay? This is why this is creating an issue because, because thieves now understand how much money these are worth. And so they will risk you know, going and potentially getting shot, going to jail, whatever they have to do because they pay the little fine to the jail, whatever, no big deal. They'll probably make even more money, right? So that's where they're like, ah, who cares? Things are tough. Times are difficult right now. I'm going to go and take these off these vehicles. Now, here's a warning. If you live in a small city, okay, a small town, chances are you'll be perfectly fine. But if you live in a bigger city, according to experts, they say that is where thefts are happening, happening more often. And a lot of times it's not at night. It's in broad daylight. You pull up to the grocery store, somebody cuts off your catalytic converter, off they go. No big deal. They don't care. That's why this is creating an issue. Because for some people, and again, this is where things get you know, very interesting. For some people, it makes more sense for them to not file an insurance claim and just pay for a catalytic converter than to file an insurance claim. So that's why even though ex insurance experts are telling us over 150,000 catalytic converters were stolen last year and they're actually on the rise, some, some reports are indicating that we could be closer to 500,000 catalytic converters stolen this year in 2023, simply because of the price of these rare metals and the difficult times in our economy. But here are the 10 cars that were stolen, uh, that catalytic converters were stolen off the most back in 2022. And just understand that vehicles that are sitting higher up, that even have a little bit of a lift, so SUVs uh, or trucks, these are actually stolen the most because of the ease of access to the catalytic converter. So this is a list of the top 10 vehicles. Starting from number one, we'll go all the way to 10. Number one is the Ford F-Series truck. Number two, Honda Accord. Number three, Toyota Prius. Number four, Honda CRV. Number five, Ford Explorer. Number six, Ford Ecoline. Number seven, Chevy, uh, Chevy Equinox. Number eight, Chevy Silverado. Number nine, Toyota Tacoma. And number 10, the Chevy Cruze. Those are the top 10 vehicles that catalytic converters were stolen off of in 2022. Obviously we're three months into 2023, so we don't have a list there. But I just wanna warn you, right now there's a lot of stuff happening, there's a lot of issues. So we have to be vigilant, we have to understand what is going on because if we don't know what's going on, it's very difficult to plan for it. So just understand, right now, we are going through the negotiation process of dealing with debt prioritization, but also solving this debt ceiling crisis. As soon as we get more information on that, I promise I will fill you in on all the latest news and updates. Again, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the next one.